During our look at the first commandment, we have been using Paul's comments in Romans chapter 1 to draw out some additional implications. We've seen that um, regardless of what we say, we have a God and that we are worshiping something. We've also noted that what we worship is shaping us. So um, Paul also lets us know that we may not know who our God is. Um, I say this in part because I'm, I, I emphasize this in part because I'm coming to realize more and more um, how often we don't see ourselves very clearly. Uh, it's a chilling thought to, to realize that sometimes everybody in the room sees somebody better than they see themselves. And it just obviously leads to the obvious question. <laughs> what does everybody know about me that I don't know about myself? So I, I have no, as a, as a pastor, I'll just reflect back that a, a lot of times I'll hear people say, you know, I tried God, but it didn't work. Uh, I prayed and I, you know, I wanted this job or I wanted this relationship or I wanted such and such and it didn't happen. Okay. Well, just note that the, the, that sort of reflects a prioritization in which God is not God. What you want ultimately is, in one sense, your God. You're simply trying to leverage uh, and harness God towards your own agenda. And so, um, look, God demands to be God. We have to realize that uh, we do not exist for God's benefit, excuse me, God does not exist for our benefit. We exist for his. Um, it, this is a big deal, and it really, for me, it was almost more of a conversion experience coming to that realization than my conversion, which took place over a long period of time and uh, didn't have any great eureka moments. But there was a moment in which I realized, oh, hmm, I've sort of been trying to control God so that God would do what I wanted, and I sort of thought he was there for me, uh, and, and I've got all of this uh, upside down. So, um, look, the question is, I'll ask you here, is who are you really worshiping? Um, look, a big part of my own spiritual growth came about when I, when I, um, understood this, that I, I had to stop projecting and saying that God was like me, only better, or God was, um, was what I thought God was, uh, only slightly modified. Um, it, there's, there's parallels here to being married. You, you get married and you think you know the person that you married, and there's just lots of discoveries over time, and you're like, oh, huh. Wow, I had projected <laughs> that you would, of course, think like this or you would do this or whatever because that I'm projecting myself. And there's a sense in which as we grow in, an, in a relationship with God, God surprises us. He is bigger and better and more amazing. He's more unsettling in some ways than we expected him to be. We, we tend to make God safer and smaller. We tend to make God somebody that we can understand. Um, and we get, we get um, upended when we realize that he is, uh, he is different than we expected. Now, it's in many ways, when that happens, it is easier to worship him because a, a better understanding of who he is always leads to more awe and worship. But um, I just want to, you know, uh, end the week by asking the question, who is your God? Um, you, might, you might say, well, my God is, is God the Father, uh, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit. My God is the God of the Bible. Okay, G good, yes, maybe. Um, but I'm not asking who God should be. I'm asking... Um, I'm not even asking, by the way, who you who you think you worshipped on Sunday morning, or or um, uh, I, I'm I'm asking you, what did you think about this week? Who what motivated you when you when you if you woke up in the middle of the night? What did you think about? What are you what are you praying for? What is what is motivating you? What has captured your heart? What are you talking about? What are, you, what are you saying to people? What are you most likely to steer the conversations toward? Who or what are you worshiping 
in the course of the week. Um, I doubt that any answer that you would come up with would be a bad thing, right? I, I, I doubt that it would be a bad thing. It may be that it's a very good thing. Uh, you might have thought about your children. Or you might have thought about something you want to do for somebody. You might have thought about, I don't know, your reputation. I, I don't know what you thought about. It's unlikely that it's some Egyptian, you know, statue that you that you worshipped. But I want to say um, something is first place in your heart, and and we do well to be able to look at ourselves a little bit more dispassionately and objectively. And the Bible is making this big leading claim. The Ten Commandments as God is or, organizing his people to, to position them to have a healthy society and lives and the flourish. He says, you got to get this right. Like You've got to know who I am. I am who I am, not who you make me. So who is your God? What have you been worshiping this week? Have a good day.